Um, I'm Tim Wilson, for those of, um, of you that don't know me. I'm working for the Conservation Ecology Centre. I've been there for um, the past six months working on a pig and deer project um, for the Wild Outways Initiative, um, which is an Australian government project and it's been delivered through the Kerangamite CCMA. Um, I really need to acknowledge the, um, the amount of effort that the CC, CEC have put in um, before my time into this project and getting it all up and running. There's been a power of work that's gone into it all. Um, so it's much appreciated and it's made it run, um, run a lot more smoothly than what it would have. So the project is um, broken down into three, um, three distinct sort of um, sections. One's the community engagement and education, one's the intelligent, intelligence, and the other one's control. And I'll speak to, to them also in my later slides. First of all, we'll touch on the um, habitat and ecology of the feral pigs, because we really need to understand as much as we can about these animals um, before we can create an um, effective control program. So feral pigs are so successful in Australia because of their ability to adapt to a wide variety of habitats. The Otways is one of the of many habitats that provides everything they need to thrive, plentiful water, an abundance of food, and dense vegetation to call their home. Under these favorable conditions, females are able to produce two to three litters per year, which is pretty scary, um, with an average litter size of five to six piglets. Within the Otways, we're noticing higher than average litter sizes with a number of females with eight piglets at tow. This gives you an idea on, on how these populations can expand so rapidly. And we're beginning to see evidence of this occurring through the Otways as we speak. Why are these such a pest? So some of you might be asking, why are these animals such a pest? Well, there's, there's many reasons. They cause considerable amount of damage to our natural environment where they destroy a critical habitat for our native plants and wildlife. They damage our waterways by wallowing in and digging along our sensitive river systems, lakes and swamplands. The image to the bottom right of the screen shows the embankment um, which has been eroded. The pigs have dug in the side of it and they've also trampled along and, and used that as a um, path to traverse along the side of the river and it's eroding the side of the, the um, embankment there. Feral pigs are also hosts for, for pathogens such as brucellosis and leptospirosis and could also carry diseases such as foot and mouth disease and African swine fever should those diseases um, be accidentally introduced into Australia. A recent study has also found that globally, feral, feral pigs generate more carbon emissions than 1 million cars through soil, soil disturbance. They can plough up pasture equivalent to the size of a football field overnight. And the image at the top right of the screen shows the pasture damage that was done by one pig just over one night. So it's pretty immense and very scary when you're actually out there and see it in person. This is another photo, this is probably the worst damage that we've come across and keep in mind that all these photos are um, within the last six months. Um, this was done by multiple pigs over two nights and they're all chasing this, the, um, the cockchafer larvae. So they're active from, um, they're active from late autumn to early spring. And this is when they tend to see an increase in pig sightings and damage as they're out in the park pastures wreak, wreaking havoc. At other times of the year, we believe they are more likely to frequent our natural environments, degrading habit, habitat and competing for food sources with our native wildlife, such as the long-nosed bandicoot pictured down in the right-hand side of the screen. In a lot of our monitoring areas, we are seeing a lot of um, long-nosed potteroos and a lot of long-nosed bandicoots in this same similar habitat to the pigs, and they're just destroying their, their habitat completely. So part of the project and a big part of the project is to, to gather as much intel as we can because knowledge is power. And at this point of time, there's very little known about feral pig density, distribution and seasonal movement within the Otways. With the use of GPS tracking collars, camera monitoring grids, eDNA waterway sampling, 
and through sightings reported by the community using the feral scan application, which I'll touch on later on, we will gain a much greater understanding and insight into these pest species to help inform collaborative and effective control efforts into the future. So that's just my dog using the doggy door. So GPS tracking collars are currently being deployed on a number of individuals across various landscapes throughout the Altways, um, focusing on the seasonal movements through cool temperate forests. They will be tracking their locations and activity over 10 to 12 months. This data will give us a better understanding of how feral pigs are using these landscapes throughout the year and help to inform best practice control techniques. These photos are of um, the first pig we collared. That's uh, Bruce. He got the name because we were, um, we were monitoring him for well over two months before we managed to trap him. He was a real hard case to, to crack, um, but he's taught us a lot in the, in the meantime. Once the collar has been deployed, we receive their location every hour and continue to monitor their health by monitoring cameras deployed in the field. And this here is a snippet of Bruce's movements over the first 40 days of color deployment from late June to August. At this time of year, he has been spending most of his time in dense vegetation, using this to traverse between pastures for a feed of cockchafer larvae and meeting up with female groups from time to time. From north to south in a straight line, he has covered approximately 10 kilometers and then four kilometers east to west. Keep in mind that we're in the early stages of data collection. And once these colors have been deployed for their 10 to 12 month period, we will be able to collect them and analyze both the location and accelerometer data, which gives us um, their activity, which will be very interesting. Um, and this will paint a much better picture about how they really are using the landscapes. So you'll have to tune in into the next forum next year to see further results. So another form of data collection we're using is camera grids. Um, it's a tool we're using to, during this project. We've rolled out three camera grids to date, deploying each camera grid for four to six weeks at a time through the use of the spatially explicit capture mark recapture technique, we'll be able to estimate population densities in these areas. We've also found that with enough, enough photos of each, pigs, each pig, we're able to identi individually identify most of them. As you can see, some are much easier than others. During analysis of our second camera grid, we identified 45 individuals and have managed to control 29 of these and fit GPS tracking collars to two of them. This map provides a broad overview of feral pig distribu distribution within the Otways. This data has been compiled from camera trap images and verified sightings over many years. Over the next two years of this project, we will continue to build on this existing data using data from our GPS tracking colors, camera grids, and ad hoc camera monitoring. Another tool we will be exploring for, the, for those harder to reach landscapes and hopefully fill in some of the gaps where we expect the pigs to be, but we, we're just not certain. We haven't had any um, confirmed sightings yet. It will be eDNA waterway sampling. As there is abundance of waterways throughout the Otways, <clears throat> we will conduct an eDNA pilot study to measure the success and value of using eDNA water samples as a monitoring tool that may particularly be useful to land managers in measuring presence, absence, of feral pigs in hard to reach landscapes where traditional monitoring tools fail or are impractical. If the pilot study is successful, this will be a quick and easy tool to use in areas of sus suspected but unconfirmed feral pig presence. While collecting all of this data, we're also actively controlling populations of feral pigs in the Otways. Primarily, we will be using two methods of control, remotely triggered cage trap and hog on bait stations. Both of these methods have been proven effective in controlling multiple numbers of pigs at once. Thorough mo monitoring before commencing any control is one of the one very important key for success, and I can't stress that enough. With continued monitoring pre and post control, you get to know how many individuals you are targeting to help inform your control efforts. 
We set up monitoring cameras on free feed sites consist, consisting of fermented corn, which is a mix of cracked corn, water and yeast until we're happy with the entire, that the entire cohort is accessing the feed. Our traps are fitted with hog eye surveillance cameras. You can see up in the top left-hand side of the screen. Um, and um, these, send, these cameras send the user a notification when pigs are in the trap. The user can live stream video footage. And when they're happy, the entire cohort, which has been identified during earlier monitoring efforts is inside the trap, they can close the trap door all from the comfort of their home. I've got some videos here. I'll see if they play. Hopefully they're all right. This just gives you a bit of an idea on how the kids react with the trap. Um, this one shows all the young ones coming in first to the trap. And that's what we always seem to happen. So patience is key, really. All the young ones come in, they get used to it. And the smarter adults, they hang off a bit just to make sure it's safe. So this one here shows the adults just hanging around the outside, just sussing it all out. The young ones are nice and comfortable in there. And then this one, you can see all the adults, all the, all the young ones are inside the trap, nice and comfortable. And then when, when you're at that point, when you know you've got the whole cohort, you can um, close the trap and away you go. <clears throat> so once these individuals have been dispatched, we collect serum, tissue, fecal and tick samples from each one. They're sent away to Agricultural Victoria and the Arthur Royal Institute to be analysed for disease and genetics. We also use, we will also be using the hog on bait stations, which you can see up on the top right hand side of your screen. Um, they're deployed in specifically designed bait stations, and these are quite new to the market and are providing to be successful and humane control option across the country. The baits contain sodium nitrite, which is an approved food preservative in low doses. Pigs are very susceptible to this because they have low levels of protective enzyme that is present in most other animals. It kills them quickly by depleting oxygen supply to the brain and tissues, just as if they were going to sleep. They specifically design the bait boxes to stop any off-target damage and no permit is required for its use. So it's quite um, user-friendly for any landholders that might be interested in it. So finally, how you can get involved, you can help by reporting feral pig sightings, damage or control through the Feral Scam website or application. It's available on mobile devices, um, pretty much yeah, anything. If you're carrying it around, you notice a, some damage or siding, um, it'd be great if you could put, put some um, information into there. And a link to the Feral Scam website can be found on the Conservation Ecology Centre website at conservationecologycentre.org slash reporter feral. And also keep an eye out for one of our pig and deer information sessions being held through your local land care network. And that's about me. Thanks for your time, everyone.